Enrico Pucci, prison chaplain, loyal friend, and successor to Dio, and by far the most underrated and misunderstood villain in Jojo. In this video, I will be discussing Pucci's complex worldview, his motivations, what sets him apart from other villains, and his unique role in Stone Ocean. From Enrico's introduction, we immediately see a very important quality to Pucci that sets him apart from other Jojo villains, his caution and extreme forethought. To obtain Jotaro's memory disc, he went through the effort of framing Jolene for 15 years in prison, all for the purpose so that he could lure Jotaro to the prison and put him in a situation where he would need to choose between saving his daughter or attacking Pucci and John Gallier. This analytical and deeply perceptive side to Pucci has led him to great success. Pucci carefully chooses who to aid him as a stand user, noticing Sports Max's potential for evil, therefore giving him the destructive stand Limp Biscuit. Enrico Pucci's stand, White Snake, was formed out of a need to keep his sister's memories alive, who passed away. Pucci believes that his actions are right and tries to avoid needless bloodshed advising Jolene many times to go home and spend her last days with her family, and using his power to keep Weather safe in prison until a universal reset, where he otherwise could have seen him as an obstacle and killed him, because he knows what his power was. However, there is no doubt Pucci in many ways is still a villain. He is a character capable of great malice, best seen in his interaction with a guard during Weather Report's heavy rainfall, and which he purposely allowed a guard to die to the rogue stand ability because he decided not to save Pucci's life in return. Events like these have all fueled Enrico Pucci's belief in psychological egoism, the belief that we are always deep down motivated by what we perceive to be in our best self-interests. To understand Pucci's actual goal, we need to consider his past as a 15-year-old on the path to priesthood, a time in his life in which he lost everything close to him. Pucci, while standing in for the priest in a confessional booth, was told by a grieving mother that she switched out his sickly baby for their fraternal twin, that twin being Pucci's brother Wes, better known as Weather Report, meaning Pucci's sister Perla was dating his twin brother which everyone thought had died. Eager to end the fair and save Perla from being hurt, Pucci hired a group to force his twin brother and Perla apart. However, this group found out that Wes's father was African American and hanged him for it, leading to Perla committing suicide. Pucci, who had just lost his beloved sister due to an unpredictable series of coincidences, is then struck by the arrow Dio gave him through his neck suddenly in his biggest moment of grief, as he opens his heart to Dio's view on fate and destiny. It is very important to understand Pucci's character that we all have to relate to him in his situation. If anybody had experienced these unexplainable and highly unlikely series of events, I believe they would have felt just as Pucci did, lost, without a sense of direction, and looking to find meaning in his grief, which he found through Dio. Pucci had little time to grieve and instead partially used the heaven plan as a form of coping for the death of Perla. A common criticism and assumption of Pucci is that he is a fanatic, a mindless follower like Vanilla Ice who will follow Dio out of obsession, but this could not be farther from the truth. While Pucci does respect Dio and loves him in his own way, he has his own clear reasons for wanting others to know their destinies in the plan for heaven, that being so they would not have to feel the grief that Pucci felt, suddenly losing everything dear to him. Pucci has his own mind, and often degree disagrees with Dio on many topics. To label Pucci a fanatic follower does not give Pucci's character credit. <laughs> After Pucci escapes from the prison to find the green baby, an essential part of the plan agreed by Pucci and Dio, he is brought under great stress which causes a lot of changes in his character. He is basically carrying the burden of a whole new universe on his shoulders while still being pursued by Jolene and her friends. 
It is only when he coincidentally meets one of Tio's sons, Ungalo, while he is taken hostage that he regains his belief in destiny and gains his confidence back. These acts of fate ensure that Puji continues on his path and believes what he is doing is right. However, on the other hand, Puji believing that he is righteous allows him to commit more acts of evil, killing more people like with Sea Moon in Cape Canaveral. If the events hadn't played out so particularly, it's very likely Pucci would have enjoyed a quiet life as a priest. Pucci's motivations and views on fate are all well developed and understandable, which makes him not only a great villain, but a tragic one. Pucci is an iron-willed character that I believe to have a great humanity that, while flawed, truly sought out to make a better mankind and was willing to risk everything for the sake of heaven. So there's my thoughts on Enrico Pucci and why I believe he is by far the most underrated villain in Jojo. I hope I've made you see Pucci in a different light and that you appreciate his character more. I believe he is a remarkably unique character because of how much we see of him and how much we understand his thought processes. He's also a very human and strong character that I believe needs a lot more love in the community and a lot more appreciation.